So, this is the native Irish cherry tree called a bird cherry. And here are caterpillars. And these caterpillars devour the leaves of the bird cherry. You can see there's more of them right up here. There you go. Those are the bird cherry moth larvae or caterpillars. You can see the bird cherry fruits are here. But these caterpillars will continue under this netting to devour these leaves. Now the bird cherry will, all these leaves that you're seeing here will probably, as these mature, so you can see there's one, two, three, and four, then there's a big nest there, more over there, more over there. There's a big pile of them right here. Right there is a big pile of bird cherry caterpillars. Now, all of them will devour this young bird cherry tree leaves. When they turn into cocoons, they make webbing along these trunks and they cover them in a netting to put their cocoons on. Then, when they mature and turn into the moths, uh, white, I've taken a photograph, so I've got a photograph of a mature bird cherry moth. So when they mature and they leave their chrysalis and fly away, it's at the exact same time or similar time that bats get weaned and have to go and fend for themselves. So this cherry tree will be filled with cocoons. I'll film that later on when they get to that stage. You'll see they'll strip the leaves. They'll then put their cocoons up against the trunks covered in netting. The cherry, bird cherry, will reproduce its leaves again. And when the moths hatch, or sorry, come out of their cocoons and turn into moths and start flying around, all the baby bats have food. So you need a high proportion of food when they're still growing and maturing and being weaned. And these bird cherry moths will be their main food. So that's why I don't spray my trees that get devoured by bird cherry moth caterpillars because it's food for the bats. And food for the bats means they also eat the midges which eat me alive. So that's more of the bird cherry. You can see there's an elderflower over there. There's an elderflower. And uh, yeah, lots of cow parsley and hogweed. That's a bit of hogweed there. The, this is the big leaf versus the um, cow parsley. There's cow parsley in there. This is hogweed. It's another umble with uh, big leaves. This is the one that if you're strimming or cutting down, you can be sun sensitive and it can burn your skin. So they can be quite ferocious, but the pollinators love them. So here's the difference between, these are all hogweeds. And if we come in here, oh, these are elderflowers. These are elderflower. That's elder. This is a different kind of elder. It's not the elderflower that is this shrub here. This is an elder, ground elder. And so these are elderflowers. It's another umble pollinator. So this is, this is cow parsley. That's a cow parsley leaf. So this is cow parsley, which is the first one, and it's maturing to a seed. So these will be eaten soon by birds. This is ground elder. Pollinators love this. And then this is hogweed, big old hogweed with its big leaves. And this is the one that 
can, um, the sap from this can affect you um, badly and burn your skin and make you sun sensitive. But they do have a beautiful flower. So that's hogweed. Cow parsley. You can see the flower is different. And then this is, well, that's not quite in bloom. Let's see if there's a, a cow par, a ground elder in bloom. Maybe this is a bit more in bloom. Yeah, that's ground elder. So those are three of our spring or summer flowering family, carrot family. They're all part of the carrot family, all of these. And the hogweed is the biggest and tallest native Irish one of these. There are other ones that are not native Irish that look like these that are kind of an invasive species. But this is, these three, that, hogweed, um, cow parsley, and ground elder are all native of the carrot family.